from the NBC studios in Burbank, California, The Tonight Show with Jay Leno, featuring Bradford Marsalis and The Tonight Show Band. Tonight, Jay welcomes Mel Gibson, soprano Kathleen Battle, columnist Molly Ivins, and presidential Jeopardy, I'm Ed Hall, and now, Jay Leno. exciting out there. Uh, looks like uh, looks like it's really going to be a three-way race. And for those of you unfamiliar with the obscure third-party candidate, now, let me give you the correct pronunciation of his name. It's pronounced Clinton. Clinton. That's... <laughs> Actually, I'm being unfair. You know, Bill Clinton won the primaries in Arkansas and Kentucky. In fact, Clinton is so certain that he's getting the Democratic nomination that he has already started working on his November concession speech. Boy, I tell you, that's cocky. <laughs> Hey, you see the photo in the paper this morning of Ross Perot browsing around the 7-Eleven? No, you see that? You know, hey, I knew the guy was wealthy, but I had no idea he could afford to shop at 7-Eleven, boy. Now, now you're talking bucks, boy. And here's one of the advantages of going live. About an hour or so ago, about an hour and a half, we just saw uh, Ross Perot and his wife with Barbara Walters on 2020. He said something pretty dumb. This is what he said. He said, if he were president, he would not hire homosexuals because their presence would be a distraction. <laughs> now, wait, now, wait a minute. A distraction to who? I mean, I mean, Ross, if you're not able to concentrate on your work because there are a couple of good-looking guys in the office, that's your problem, not theirs. Isn't it? <laughs> you know? And it was discovered earlier in the week that Ross Perot's father once wrote a letter to then-Senator Lyndon Johnson asking LBJ to get his son out of the Navy. Boy, first Dan Quayle's dad, then Ross Perot's. You know, that kind of makes you appreciate the honor of Bill Clinton. At least when he wanted to weasel out of the service, he had the guts to write his own letter. Yeah. And I'm sure you know, President Bush is sending the Haitian boat people back to Haiti, huh? You know something, I think I see where the boat people made their mistake with President Bush. See, if they wanted Bush to accept them, they shouldn't call themselves the boat people. They should have called themselves the Haitian yacht people. See, then, <laughs> then they would have welcomed them with open arms, sure. Well, you know why he's not letting them in? You know why? President Bush says the U.S. has a policy of not letting in people from countries with bad economies. Boy, it's a good thing we're here already, huh? We never get back in. <laughs> yeah, so please, don't leave. And military cutbacks are in the news. You know, when you think of what it takes to fight a war, I mean, it's really staggering. For example, do you know from the beginning of the Vietnam, uh, the Vietnam War until today, our military used more explosive than, than were used in lethal weapon one, two, and three combined. That's unbelievable. All three combined. And some politicians here want to make California into two separate states. You know, why are we wasting tax money on this? I mean, eventually, the San Andreas Fault will do it for free, isn't it? Please, <laughs> save your dough. And how about these genetically altered foods? Now, this has been in the paper all week. You know about this? This is where they take genes from one organism and they insert them into another. In fact, I read today, you know, science is unbelievable. I read today where they've created a chicken which contains genes from a pig. This is true. And this way, they get a hen that lays bacon and eggs. You see, the whole thing, yeah, very sophisticated, yeah. Oh, I'm sure the Denny's people will be right on top of that one. <laughs> now, wouldn't it be great if they could come up with a genetically engineered politician? I mean, think about that. You could take one gene from each party. This way, you'd have a Republican that could balance the budget and a Democrat who could keep his pants on. And boy, <laughs> together. <laughs> Awful lot of dopey products coming on the market. You know what they're selling now? This is true, Spam Light. <laughs> I'm not making that up. Spam Light. Boy, what does it say on the front of that can, huh? Mmm, same vile taste with only half the disgusting yellow slime. <laughs> Ooh, spam light. 
Now here's another thing that seems unbelievable, but this is true. In China, they're selling cigarettes that can cure hemorrhoids. That's what they say. No, you smoke these cigarettes and they cure hemorrhoids. Boy, how hard do you have to inhale to get those to work? Huh? <laughs> Please. And here in Los Angeles, Police Chief Daryl Gates' staff gave him a surprise birthday party, which included a cake in the shape of Los Angeles. Unfortunately, uh, K uh, Gates got there too late to blow out the candles and the whole cake burned to the ground. Yeah, sad. <laughs> Last but not least, how about that guy in the Philippines? This has been in the news every day. This guy who's half man and half woman. Think about that. I mean, he really is half man and half woman. That must be strange. And here's my question. When he leaves, leaves the toilet seat up, do you think he yells at himself? <laughs> well, I don't know, but Mel Gibson is here. I know that for sure. The music of Kathleen Battle, Molly Ivins, and of course, Franklin Marcellus and the Tonight Show Band. <laughs> Okay. Well, this is the end of the week for us. It's gone pretty good. You know, we've been doing live shows all week. What you're seeing is happening right now, and we could not have done it without this terrific staff. Boy, they've done a great job, and of course, uh, Branford and the guys. Just, just unbelievable. You're reading the reviews, they've been going crazy, so that's good. But here's something that's kind of neat. Look at this. This is from the... Uh... <laughs> The Chicago Tribune TV Week. This kind of made me laugh. I blew it up here, it's, but it says, uh, this is for our premiere show. It says, The Tonight Show, 1035, Jay Leno takes over as host. Repeat. <laughs> and we'll be right back with, ooh, with our, with our sketch, our first sketch ever, right after this. See you in a second. Coming up, George Bush, Bill Clinton, and H. Ross Perot face the ultimate test. Hello? Daddy, it's the factory calling. They want us to order more Rangers again. More, more, more. Hang up quick, son. We're running over with Rangers. Folks, Daddy's right. We've got hundreds of four and six cylinders, automatics and five speeds, XLTs and sports. Like this XLT, loaded with stereo cassette, air power steering and brakes, cloth bin seats, carpet plus cast aluminum wheels. Just 8680. That's a Jim Skinner Ford. Where a hundred dollars says we'll beat your best deal regardless. Daddy, let's order more Rangers. Not! Help take the criminals off the streets. For six years, I've been putting killers and drug dealers behind bars. I'm Penny Wildman. My mother, realtor Billy Hamilton, was murdered four years ago. The man who killed my mom is on death row, thanks to Mike Campbell. People like Mike make our community much safer. Please help me keep Shelby County safe. On June 2nd, we elect Mike Campbell for a safer Shelby County and keep the criminals where they belong. Tonight, President George Bush takes on Democratic challenger Governor Bill Clinton of Arkansas and third-party candidate billionaire H. Ross Perot in Presidential Jeopardy! And now, here's your host, Jay Trebek! Hello, 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 and welcome to Presidential Jeopardy! Hey, let's get started right away. The categories are politics. The economy, foreign affairs, domestic affairs, show tunes, <laughs> and potpourri. Okay, Mr. Bush, you're the incumbent. Let's begin with you. Well, thank you, Jay. I think I should be pretty good at this game. After all, I am the education president. I am the environmental president. I'm the egg man. I'm the walrus cuckoo kachoo. All right, let's, <laughs> let's just play the game, shall we? All right. All right, I think I'll take politics for 100, Jay. Okay, politics for 100. This person ran the country for two terms in the 1980s. Who was Reagan? More specific, please. Who was Nancy Reagan? That is correct, yes. Oh. All right. 
Now listen, Gilbert, wonderful. I'm pretty good at foreign affairs, so let's try that for a hundred. Okay. In spite of the Persian Gulf War, he is still in power. <laughs> Who is Saddam Hussein? Wrong! Who is George Bush? That is correct! <laughs> that is right. Now, Mr. Uh, Mr. Clinton, you, uh, you are now in control of the board. Okay, Jay. Jay, I'd like to take pot party for $100. No, that's... I'm sorry, that's, uh... That, that's potpourri, Governor Clinton, potpourri. Oh. All right, the answer. A green leafy substance, sometimes known as the evil weed. Uh, what is marijuana? No. What is broccoli? That is correct. All right. All right. We, we get the big mo going now. I'll take the economy for 100. Okay, the economy for 100. The answer is blank. What is President Bush's economic policy? That is correct, yes! That is unfair. Uh, give me politics for 200, Jay. Okay, politics for 200. Uh, from the Greek word, ethiki, meaning the ability to tell right from wrong. Oh, I'm sorry, no, it's ethics, gentlemen. What are ethics? No, I'm sorry. No, right. I guess not. That is the end of round one, and let's meet our contestants, starting President Bush. How are you? Well, I just want to say, Jay, that I, I deserve to be reelected. We've had a wonderful first term. Why, just look at the wreckage. Record. Yeah. <laughs> Record. Well, thank you, Mr. President. Governor Clinton, now you've been doing an awful lot of traveling lately. Do you miss Arkansas? I never touched Miss Arkansas. <laughs> all right, all right, fine. Mr. Perot? How are you, Mr. Perot? I, I'm glad you brought that up, Jay. Uh, now, the reason I'm here is because American people want me here. The first thing we need to do is balance the budget. Now, that's going to be getting the president and the Congress to dancing together like Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers. That's going to be Ginger Rogers dancing backwards like a Congress does. And I'm going to yeah, be I'm leading. I'm sure it is, Mr. Anyway, look, time to begin the second round. Now, Governor Clinton, <laughs> Governor Clinton, you control the board. Okay, Jay, I'll take uh, potpourri for $200. Potpourri for $200. An asylum for wealthy alcoholics and substance abusers. What is the Betty Ford Clinic? Wrong! What is Congress? That is correct! <laughs> All right, let's take politics for three, uh, 300, Jay. Politics for 300, okay. He defeated Michael Dukakis in 1988. Who is Willie Horton? That is correct! <laughs> Uh, Jay, I'll take, uh, politics for 400. Okay, politics for 400. Oh, it's the audio daily double. Oh, good, I'll wager $100. Okay, Governor Clinton, please identify this sound. Okay. What are the L.A. riots? No, I'm sorry, what is Ted Kennedy's bachelor party? No, I'm oh. sorry, no. I should have known that, I was there, okay. <laughs> Okay, Jay, I'll take uh, domestic affairs for $100. Domestic affairs for $100. She allegedly had an affair with JFK. Who is Marilyn Monroe? Correct. Domestic affairs for $200. Okay. She allegedly had an affair with Gary Hart. Who is Donna Rice? That is correct. Domestic affairs for $300. Okay. She allegedly had an affair with Jim Baker. Who is Jessica Hahn? That is correct. Domestic affairs for $400. She allegedly had an affair with Senator Charles Robb. Who, who is Ty Collins? That is correct! <laughs> Domestic affairs for $500. Okay, she allegedly had an affair with the governor of Arkansas. <laughs> uh, I think I lost my voice well, again. Laryngitis again, sad, sad. Anybody else? Perot, yes! Uh, who is Guinea for flowers? That is correct, Guinea for flowers is the correct answer. Okay, and that's the end of round two. Governor Clinton, you're in the lead with $700. Mr. Perot, you have $600. Uh, and Mr. President Bush, there you have $300. Now, gentlemen, it's time to play Final Jeopardy. Okay. The answer is the most brilliant man in the 20th century. And gentlemen, please do not write your own names. <laughs> okay, while they're writing, Ed Hall, tell us what our lucky winner will receive. 
you'll be whisked away via Air Force One to historic Washington, D.C. for a fabulous four-year dream vacation. Let me make it clear, you... Hell, I don't. That's pretty cash where I come from. I got plenty of money here. Well, that's about all the time oh, we have, ladies and gentlemen. See you in another four years for Presidential Jeopardy. Good night. Next, Mel Gibson. Sports sedans, you're no doubt thinking maybe I should lower my expectations. Well, considering the Nissan Maxima SE has more power than a BMW 525i and more room than a Mercedes-Benz 300e, yet you pay thousands less than either of them, maybe you should keep your expectations high and just lower your payments. See your Nissan dealer for details, because right now you can lease a Maxima for as little as $279 a month. in a hurry call a bryant dealer to the rescue bryant's quiet two-speed plus air conditioner has a lower speed to help lower your energy bill and only your bryant dealer has it so call bryant to the rescue Why put up with glasses that just don't fit? Lens Crafters has so many ways to fit your snug points, like snug fit hinges that flex to keep their gentle fit. Lens Crafters better fit for greater comfort in about an hour. Our dentist recommended baking soda. But we wanted tartar control. Arm & Hammer Dental Care gives us both. Brushing with baking soda or a baking soda toothpaste is recommended by two out of three dentists to help provide healthy teeth and gums. New Arm & Hammer Dental Care tartar control. From the baking soda experts. Buick has created some extraordinary automobiles. None before atop this new 1992 Buick Park Avenue. From its introduction, the critics praised its marriage of European styling and American brawn. Now, you can drive the car called the best luxury car value in the world for just $3.99 a month. See your nearest Alabama Buick dealer for details. Somebody's thinking of thank our uh, three fine comedians there. You, you've seen them on the show before, but they were in makeup and things. Uh, they're very funny comedians. They'll be playing all over the country. You'll see that. It was Jim Morris as uh, President Bush. He did a terrific job. John Rourke was uh, Bill Clinton. And uh, Jack Mayberry as uh, Ross Perot. They did a nice job. Thank you. Okay. Uh, my first guest started out in such films as The Road Warrior, Bird on a Wire. I uh, starred, rather, I'm sorry, started out, starred in such films as Road Warrior, Bird on a Wire, Hamlet, his latest Lethal Weapon uh, 3, I just saw, currently the number one movie in the country. Please welcome Mel Gibson. Anyway. Oh, yeah. oh. Let's see if we can make him do that again. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> right in the palm of your hand. What do you mean? Oh, oh, oh yes. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Not here. Now, no, we're, we're doing this Jeopardy thing, and I'm, I'm reading through some notes, and your dad was like a world champion Jeopardy winner, in, right? In 1968, my dad was the... Uh, 1968 Tournament of Champion winner, yeah. On Jeopardy? Yeah, yeah, he won Jeopardy. Now, who are you? That would have been oh Art God. Fleming now. That's right? right, yeah. Did your dad get a free Craftmatic adjustable bed when he did the show? <laughs> <laughs> he, got, he got all sorts of reclining chairs, TV sets, trips to the Riviera. Boy, if he'd gotten them today, he'd have been arrested. You know? Oh, yeah, yeah. That's very funny. So, how much did he win? What was the prize in 68? Was it big dough? Was it like 100 grand or was it like 25,000? Well, by. If, if you talk about these kind of amounts today, it wasn't very much. But back yeah. then, you know, your buck went a little further. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So then you, the rot set in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, that's when your dad took the dough and took you guys to Australia, right? Yeah. Because right. you were born what? Is it Peekskill, New York? Peekskill, New York. The same town as... Uh, so people think... 
People think you're Australian, but you're an American citizen, right? You were born right. here, grew up yeah. here. Yeah, I still am. Always was. And what age did you uh, did you go there? About the age of twelve. Yeah. Twelve years of age. The voice hadn't broken yet. I was four foot ten. Four foot ten? I took my life and <laughs> shipped off. Well, that's a tough. I imagine being a, yeah. a stranger in a, every Aussie I know, I mean, I, some biker friends of mine, like, you know, they break the bottle of the glass with their teeth and then drink it and that type of thing. I mean, they're like a tough bunch, aren't they? Do you have to fight when you're being the stranger and all that when you're a kid? Well, a few scraps, you know. Uh, um, it happens more over there than I'd say here. Yeah. Here, you yeah. know, you're likely to get into a lawsuit, but there it's like whoever won the fight won the argument. <laughs> yeah, it used to be that way here, too, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Did you, so did you get in many fights? Did you? Not really. Not until I got into uh, university, I'd say. Yeah. Yeah. In college, you were. Yeah. Well, not not that many. I, I was just in the wrong place at the wrong time. Believe me, I have no stomach for it. No. Mel has the ability, but does not apply himself. Did you get a lot of that? <laughs> if he spent as much time studying as he does causing a commotion, yeah. did you get a lot of those? No, not too many. No? A couple of bad ones. Yeah. 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 Wild kid in college? No, no. Uh, yeah, I'm afraid so. Yeah. Who wasn't? You know. You gotta learn somehow. It's true, true, true. So burn your fingers often enough, you might straighten up. What type of thing? <laughs> burn your fingers often enough, you might straighten up. Yeah. But I know you say you might straighten up, not Maybe. you will straighten well, up. You know, it doesn't always work. No, no. What kind of things did you get into? Was practical joke in school, that type of thing? Oh yeah, yeah. One of the best sports was like I went to a, a, a acting academy called NIDA, and uh, we learned all sorts of skills there. And, and we used to go out, and, and the big thing was to try and sell yourself as something that you were not which uh, I suppose is criminal, it's like fraud, really, but mainly the, uh, the quest was um, picking up girls, you know? And, and, uh, and you'd... you'd uh... Imagine that was very difficult for you then. <laughs> it became far easier if you could uh, slip into a character. Like what sort of character? You mean like... Well... Uh, 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 well... <laughs> I mean, you're, you're a nice-looking guy. Why do you have to become like... Yogi Bear or something to be. I mean, what, like, what kind of character would you be? Like the old fisherman or something? What would well, you do? I, I found that if, if you pretended to be from somewhere else, like, say, a, a Glaswegian shipbuilder who just arrived in the country, that you obtained far more sort of sympathy. And this kind of maternal urge took over in most young Oh, people. I see. So you'd be sort of the helpless, oh, I'm lost, and... No, that kind of stuff, you know. Yo, I just, yo, how do they say, uh, you had to put on the whole accent, you had to put on the whole thing, and it backfired on me. This particular one did backfire on me. And there was a, a table full of Glaswegians, you know, <laughs> oh, nearby. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, you can. Oh, yeah. And I might be able to fool all you folks, but I didn't fool them. No, and, did uh, they? And they, uh, they, they busted me. Didn't take, like, kindly to it? Yeah, I got, I got in big trouble. The girl slapped me in the face, you know. Yeah, I mean, what happens now? You're with this girl, okay, she finds out you're not really a Glasgow boat builder. I mean, how, how far does it go? I mean, what do you... Well, <laughs> well, I got into sort of nautical terms, you know. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a nautical term. <laughs> so you didn't actually try to pick any up on your own. You just figured I would use this character. Always the same character? Always the... No, 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 different ones. You know, it was, a, it was like a, a sport. You know, it was something... It was suggested to us by one of the acting fraternities to go out and sort of, you know... Tend to be... And, and you, you have to maintain it, no matter what. What would be the least successful character of these... Um, I think the, uh, the guy on the bus with, with no arm. The guy on the bus with no arm? Yeah. <laughs> now, how did, how, how did that, how did that, well, I guess no. obtaining a bus would be a problem, too. Well, you'd, you'd, you'd be ill and, 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 uh, and you'd be, you know, minus a couple of members and, and you'd, uh... Well, where would your arm, oh, you put your arm in your jacket, you mean, or something? Yeah, something, you would conceal it and, uh, uh, you know, sweat, white face, the whole thing, instead of breathing heavy and coughing, and no one would ever give you a seat. Oh, that's terrible. I know. But I would think once you're alone with a I'd woman, ask for a once you're alone with a woman or you're in bed, sooner or later she'd find out you had that other arm. Wouldn't <laughs> I mean, when she realizes, oh, the arm is. Oh no, no, I just use that as a general sort of thing. It wasn't to, to persuade uh, any oh, no. member of gender, but uh, no, you couldn't do that because that would be wrong. It would. Be. <laughs> all right, we'll be right Soliciting. back. Soliciting. We're going to talk about lethal weapon. We got a clip, and we'll do all that right after this. Now Gibson. <laughs> Jay and Mel will be back after this. With this ripe tomato, I'm going to show you how this toothbrush can help take care of your gums while it takes care of your teeth. It's the revolutionary Aquafresh Flex Brush. Only Flex Brush has a pressure-sensitive neck that bends and flexes as you brush. So no matter how you brush, you can see that Flex Brush is gentle on your gums. 
And everybody knows healthy teeth need healthy gums. Aquafresh Flex Brush for gentle dental care. Wilt Chamberlain, the greatest basketball player in history, is testing the new Easy Spirit dress shoe for men. The one with the hidden sneaker inside. Looks like a dress shoe, feels like a sneaker. Wilt is doing his famous dipper dunk, only now he's doing it in Easy Spirit dress shoes. There really is a sneaker in these shoes. Easy Spirit is bringing the fans to their feet. The last thing the average person wants is the average car. That's why the new Mazda brought you the return of the pure sports car, the all-new RX-7. And the return of the Roadster, the Miata. That's why our 929 feels personal. And our MX-6 feels timeless. It's why every Mazda will fulfill its promise in a way no other car can. All across Alabama, our schools face a funding crisis, putting our children at risk. In Jefferson County, we have the chance to provide local schools with an additional $4 million a year by approving Greyhound Racing. It's not the answer to all our problems, but it's a step in the right direction. Our future depends on how well we educate our children. And with the money we will get from the race course, we can make sure we give them our best. Some children in Shelby County are in trouble. And even though they have done nothing wrong, they have nowhere to turn and no one to protect their rights. They are the innocent victims of broken families. When Mike Joyner was appointed court guardian and attorney for these children, he knew it would be both mentally and emotionally challenging. Yet he knew the rewards were just as great. On June 2nd in the Republican primary, elect Mike Joyner judge Shelby County Circuit Court. You know, ladies and gentlemen, this is the show for you. It's late night, and since Dave would never lie to you, join Martin Short and Mariel Hemingway tonight. Andre Agassi, Steffi Graham, plus defending champions Jim Currier and Monica Sellers. The French Open. Coverage begins this weekend on NBC. Even after Memorial Day, you'll find Birmingham's best buys are at Roebuck Parkway Dodge. Drive home a new Mark III conversion van for only $17.7. Or a new caravan for only $13.9. Or a new Dakota sport truck for only $89.88. And while they last, 92 dynasties for only $10.988 or $209 per month. The holiday is over, but the holiday prices are still here at Roebuck Parkway Dodge. You only have to give a little to get us to give a lot. My dad had said something about my stepmother had been trying to come on to my husband. I didn't believe him. On the next Geraldo, Tammy wouldn't believe her father, but would she believe her own child? My son told me he had to talk to me in private. And he told me that um, he'd seen his dad and his grandma on the couch and her kissing him on the back. Tammy, pretty soon it's going to get to the point where he's going to start doing it right in your face. Through all of it, and I just keep on loving him. Next Geraldo, Monday at 4 on Alabama's 13. The new 13 First Alert, your first word on bad weather. Welcome back. We're talking with Mel Gibson. You, uh, can you just work with uh, Branford in the band? I did. I've, I've never met Branford. Hi, Branford. Hey, I've Mel. never met you, but I have worked with you. You know that. You know, that's true. I remember. How does that work? Well, he, he wrote some terrific music for a thing that I narrated. And, uh, oh, I see. Or I narrated, it, narrated uh, some quite music well. that he wrote. Incredibly oh, okay. well. And you, Incredibly yeah, well. It was great. What was the thing? It's, it was a, a kid's thing about David and Goliath. Oh, I see. And he's got this wonderful music. It's kind of Middle Eastern, sort of African kind of thing going. It's like, you know. <laughs> it, it sounds great. I'm sure the it's African like, people would love that impression, yeah. But, but, <laughs> but it's, hard, it's hard to sort of hum the tune. Yeah, it kind of sums up the African music. Very good. That is, the band is just thrilled with that. But you know, you, that's what I like about you know when you, you you do movies like Lethal Weapon and those sort of let you allows you to do the Hamlets, which was terrific. I mean, I I mean I thought that takes. Oh no. You know, sometimes uh, sometimes I, I see stars of your stature. They get so big they can't afford to 
try something with, a little dangerous. And, and that's what I like. That's what I thought that was terrific. Yeah, well, I like falling on my ass. <laughs> <laughs> well, you haven't done it yet, but let me ask you about Lethal Weapon. Now, this is <laughs> the build. It's an actual building they blow up in the beginning. It's, yeah, I was, I was right there. I watched this thing. It's quite amazing. My mouth dropped open and it got full of gravel. Was, uh, <laughs> uh, quite a sight. Actually, you know, they had all the blowing up buildings and those kind of things, but I saw the movie the other night and I pulled this clip. Now, I, this looked more dangerous to me than, than anything like that. Look, can we show this here? Let's put the monitor up and we'll show you a clip. This is this. You want to set this up? This is the scene. There you are. This is the scene with the dog. If you haven't seen the movie, this is. You go into a building, right? And there is a. A dog. He's a. He's a, he's a... A Rottweiler. This is like the meanest looking dog I've ever seen in my yeah, life. He's a nasty looking dog. Let's take a look. Lethal Weapon 3. <laughs> Actually eat it. You know, I've been eating these for years. Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful roughage. They uh yeah. Yeah. stops oh. tired of build up. No, what do you have? You have the <laughs> now you have the fish, I think. This is the uh I don't know, which one is it? The fish um, or the chicken? I don't know. Yeah, this Nothing. doesn't taste like fish or chicken, actually. <laughs> I've been eating these since I was a kid. No. And she was great too. Renee? Oh, so, right, so, so, yeah. Fantastic. Now is it gonna be a lethal weapon four? Well. Oh, you got to do Lethal Weapon 4. You want to see a poker face? Huh? Sure, that'll do. But I was thinking about it. And she was great, too. She and was terrific. Was, boy, she was terrific. You guys really worked well together. Yeah, she's a lot of fun. You know, I watched the other night, too. It's one of my favorite films. I rented it again because I knew you were going to be here. was uh, Gallipoli. Boy, is that a good movie. Boy. You know, I mean, I enjoy these movies. They're great, but boy, some of those two, that, some of those early ones were just great. If you get a chance to see Gallipoli, you should go down and rent it because he's just fabulous. What are you, about 22 in that one? No, well, no, a little older, but little not older, much older. But great, great. Mel Gibson, ladies and gentlemen. Oh. Next, The Tonight Show welcomes Kathleen Battle. Designed to exhilarate you. Even when you're not moving. Some days it goes your way. You've got style, you've got the say. Some days you're out of sight. You've got the dream and you've got the ride. A great day calls for a great beer. The Michelob beers. With that smooth, classic taste you don't find every day. Make a long my favorite country is? Country Scent Lysol Spray. There's not another country like it. I wouldn't change my country for a million bucks. Country Scent Lysol Disinfectant Spray is a refreshing blend of country fragrances in a disinfectant spray. Isn't it time you move to a new country? I love this country. What's your bathroom's dirtiest word? Oh, 
Lysol Basin Tub and Tile Cleaner has twice the power of original formula on soap scum. We're just for feet. The largest athletic shoe store in the world. This week, take 50% off golf shoes while supplies last. Save up to 50% on a wide selection of famous name golf shoes. Styles regularly priced up to $74.95, now $19.99 and $29.99. Hurry, only while stocks last. This is one sure way to lower your footwear score. This week at Just For Feet, where your 13th pair is free. Okay, I got a treat here for you. My next guest is one of the finest sopranos in the world. She has uh, two new albums out. Here they are right here. Uh, the Bach album with Isaac Perlman and Baroque duet with Branford's lesser known brother, Winton, performing, <laughs> performing uh, Mozart's Alleluia. Please welcome Kathleen Battle. to say hello to her before and I figure she's probably getting ready because Miss Battles is in her dressing room and when you're screaming at the game go go watch you <laughs> are you a big basketball fan I am <laughs> it's a good thing I wasn't a cheerleader in high school I wouldn't have a voice now <laughs> now where are you from originally Portsmouth Ohio Portsmouth Ohio yeah is that near uh is that near Kentucky my cousin's here um yes it's down on the um the Ohio River on the Kentucky border on the way to West Virginia, so we're down in that. We're more southern than northern. Okay, a lot of a lot of bluegrass music down there. Oh yes, uh, I grew up listening to uh, Flatten Scruggs, um, so that Motown. Would explain, that would explain the opera background. <laughs> 
and some classical. But my mother named me actually for a very famous actress uh, whose name may not be so familiar today, Deanna Durbin. Oh, sure. Yes. I know Deanna Durbin. Kathleen Deanna Durbin Battle, not when, the Durbin. When, you're, when your dad is 82, you know Deanna Durbin. <laughs> So those are the people who I know. They don't know anybody. I say Tom Cruise. They go, who? Mel Gibson? I think I've seen him. Deanna Durbin? Yes, of course. Yes. <laughs> well, it was terrific. You're going to come back and sing again a little bit later? Yes. Okay, no. and these are the two new CDs right here. <laughs> Kathleen Battle. When we come back, call Miss Molly Ivins. If you've looked at the high prices of luxury sports sedans, you're no doubt thinking maybe I should lower my expectations. Well, considering the Nissan Maxima SE has more power than a BMW 525i and more room than a Mercedes-Benz 300e, yet you pay thousands less than either of them, maybe you should keep your expectations high and just lower your payments. See your Nissan dealer for details because right now you can lease a Maxima for as little as $279 a month. These gardeners have all won top honors at America's great fairs and garden shows. Here's what miracle Grow does for them. Roses eight inches across. I grew a prize-winning dahlia 14 inches wide. This is what miracle Grow does for me. You'll never know what a great gardener you can be until you've used miracle Grow. Now the miracle Grow no clog too. It's three feeders in one. It's a gentle feeder for delicate flowers, a wand feeder, a lawn feeder. Aspen Cologne for men. Aspen, now. Big news. All Goodyear Eagles are on sale now. Save big on every Goodyear Eagle performance radio. Act fast and you'll see why we say the best tires in the world and in your neighborhood have Goodyear written all over them. Why douche? It's natural to want to feel fresh. Why douche? To feel fresh and clean on the days I don't. And what douche do women use most? One with natural ingredients. Massengill. Massengill. Because fresh feels terrific. Our dentist recommended baking soda. But we wanted tartar control. Arm & Hammer Dental Care gives us both. Brushing with baking soda or a baking soda toothpaste is recommended by two out of three dentists to help provide healthy teeth and gums. New Arm & Hammer Dental Care tartar control. From the baking soda experts. Next guest, a political columnist for the Fort Worth Star-Telegram, her syndicated column is Cabaret 30 newspapers. She's also written a book called Molly Ivins Can't Say That, Can She?, which I have read. It's a very good book. Please welcome Molly Ivins. Oh, boy, this has got to be a field day for you. We were oh, back it. there watching uh, Ross Perot on... Barbara Walters earlier, the whole thing is saying no adulterers in his, he's gonna, anybody's committed adultery won't work for him, any no gay people in his cabinet. What do, you, what do you think about any of this? Well, one would like to think that um, the most qualified person would get the job. I mean, we, we sure would have, um, sure would have been better off with an honest, competent gay than some of the, uh, at least one of the cabinet members we had under Reagan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, what is the climate of the country now? You write your column, you obviously get letters, you communicate with people. What, what do yeah. you feel is... There was a headline in the Times the other day that said, disgust and um, disinterest leading in California. I thought, boy, there's a ticket that's sweeping the nation. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Those two could, could do pretty right. well. But well, I'm having a good time. Yeah. I mean, I couldn't ask for more. I got George Bush running as the candidate of change. <laughs> On the Democratic side, there's Bill Clinton, who never inhaled, and Jerry Brown, who never exhaled. <laughs> and as if that weren't enough, God gave me this populist billionaire. Oh, Perot, yeah. You've got to admit, that's the best oxymoron the political system has produced since Reagan memoirs. <laughs> that is funny. <laughs> populist billionaire. I mean, it is very funny. I mean, you're from Texas. Now, do you, do you run into him? Do you communicate with him? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've known him for quite a while. The first time I ever wrote about him, um, the governor had just named him to head up uh, a commission to reform the public schools in Texas, and 
I wrote a column when closed by saying, great, here's Ross Perot, a man with a mind a half an inch wide, fixing to fix the public schools. God save the children. And the next day I got a telephone call. Is that Ross Perot? He sounds exactly like a chihuahua. Oh, no. <laughs> you send your column, I have mine, half an inch wide. <laughs> what? <laughs> I know said, said. Well, Mr. Perot, I guess I kind of did say that. He said, well, my friends say you're wrong. They say it's only a quarter of an inch. Ow, 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 ow. <laughs> So he's got a sense of humor, at least? Oh, is he yeah. a funny guy? I wrote a column announcing to an astonished world one time that Ross Perot is communist. Um, worse, an agent of the Kremlin. There mm -hmm. could be no other possible explanation for the man having attacked the foundation of the entire Texian way of life. He had come out against football. Oh, so I, I knew, yeah, I I knew he was a red. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, he called the next day and said, well, I've been called a lot of things before. First time I've ever been called a communist. I think I have Jerry Falwell pray for me. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, these are, these are very short conversations you seem to have with him. The best one, one he ever did, um, I made a bad error about him one time. Um, I need an example of a big rich guy for my columns, so I put Ross Perot, comma, who makes more than a million dollars a year, which I figured was a safe claim. I knew he's big rich. And the next day, the guys on our business desk in Dallas called. They're just laughing their butts off. They said, Ivan, so H. Ross Perot makes a million dollars a day. A day? I didn't know Kuwait made a million dollars a day. <laughs> so I'm sitting there thinking, boy, this is gonna be an embarrassing correction when the phone rings and an operator says, H. Ross Perot calling collect from Molly Ivins when you accept the charges. <laughs> well, do you think he'd be a good president? What is your call on? Um, you, you can't really tell um, because he's got no record. I mean, the, the oldest rule in the book for political reporters is look at the record, look at the record. And there's no record with Perot. Yeah. Um, he's uh, obviously a guy with uh, a lot of ability, particularly in the field of making money. Mm -hmm. um, I, I am a little bit troubled. He has, he is slightly paranoid, which is sort of like being slightly pregnant. Yeah. It tends to get worse. Yeah. Um, <laughs> You know, I think it's one thing to believe that somewhere over in Asia, evil, slanty-eyed people are still holding prisoners from the Vietnam War, but it's another thing to believe that the entire Pentagon is part of a vast conspiracy to cover this up. I mean, the Pentagon can't even make a toilet seat for under $700. The chances of their being able to carry off a vast conspiracy seem to me kind of slim. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. How about President Bush now? Is he... Uh... Well, I'm worried about my man, George. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> As you know, uh, the president suffers from this sort of verbal dyslexia that makes him incoherent frequently. Verbal dyslexia. But it's getting worse, and it has started to affect his gestures so mm -hmm. that he now says things like, the deficit is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. <laughs> I want to bring people together. <laughs> can't blame on the Halcyon anymore. Either. Well, the Halcyon, yeah, that's out. You can't call, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, how about Clinton now? Where do you think he stands on this? Well, bless his heart. I mean, here he is out there presenting one serious program after another on how to fix things, and all anybody ever says to him is, give us more sound bites. We need better sound bites. Mm -hmm. Why do you think he's sort of... I mean, I did a joke about him being the third-party candidate tonight. I mean, why has that happened? I mean, one day, you're, you, I mean, you're on the cover of Time and Newsweek, and you've got it, and it's locked up. I mean, he's got the nomination locked up. So why, why has he sort of fallen behind? I mean, what, what's... Oh, well, all the attention is on Perot. Um, he's, normally, this would be the point at which the press is drawing back, you know, instead of mm -hmm. focusing on the warts close up, which is what we've been doing, drawing back to take a long look at see. I mean, what does he guy. need? Does he need to start dating Jennifer Flowers again? I mean, what do you have to do to get the press... <laughs> <laughs> oh, you like? Oh, that's nice and mean. You oh, like that? Oh yeah. <laughs> I mean, what do you do? I mean, well, you know, the press. Every four years, we we promise that we won't make the same mistakes, and this was going to be the year when we were really going to have a serious substantive candidate. No more flagging Willie Horton. We were going to get right to the issues. Mm -hmm. So far, Jennifer Flowers and Murphy Brown. <laughs> uh, that is funny. I mean, the whole the whole quit. You know, we what did we say the other night? That the less Perot says the more people like him, which is a yeah. sort of a thing yeah. quail has yet to grasp. Well, yeah, that's the yeah. same sort of thing. <laughs> I mean, why do people say those? I mean, it seems so silly. Why does Oh, for the right? vice president of the United States to take on a television character? <laughs> I really, he, he has more important things to do. You know, they're making him head of the commission to um, ship the Haitian ref refugees to Gilligan's Island. Really? <laughs> All right, the book here is... Molly Ivins can't say that, can she? And uh, Kathleen's going to come back and sing with Branford right after this, right?
Branford and Kathleen Battle coming up. Miracles, a decade of working wonders for these families, these children. I'm Jerry Tracy. Because of you, miracles do happen. Please join Alabama's 13, May 30th and 31st for the Children's Miracle Network Telethon, benefiting the Children's Hospital of Alabama. With your gift, we can work wonders. You gotta hit the ground running. You want a truck as tough and as good looking as you are? You want the number one seller, Ford. Tough on the outside, comfortable on the inside. If you got more style than the next guy, move on up to a flair side. Ford backs each truck with a three-year, 36,000-mile warranty. Get cash back for a limited time. See Adams in Long Lewis, Ernest McCarty, or Jim Skinner Ford. You better hit the ground running in a new Ford truck. When the voters of Jefferson County rejected Greyhound Racing, we listened. We put together a better deal, which now has overwhelming support among business and civic groups. Now it's your turn to decide. By approving the race course, you'll be saying yes to jobs and revenue for Jefferson County. The opposition has no positive alternative. The race course will simply close and people will lose their jobs. Let's not let that happen. Say yes to the race course. Win one for Jefferson County. The American dream, a college education, a chance for success. It's a dream we hold for all of our children. Now that dream can become a reality with our new state-sponsored program called PACT, prepaid affordable college tuition. PACT guarantees Alabama's children the chance for a college education. Our new plan allows you to pre-purchase tomorrow's higher cost tuition at today's lower price. Call 1-800-ALAPACT or visit most any local bank for an application. Welcome back. Oh, I wanted to mention uh, Henry Van Nancy, who was uh, Kathleen's uh, the accompanist before. Right now, she's going to perform with Branford and the band. Please welcome Kathleen Battle.
Yeah, that doesn't get much better than that. Kathleen Battle and Branford Marsalis. Thank you, folks. Okay, I want to thank my guests, uh, Molly Ivins. Molly, thank you very, very much. And uh, there'll be plenty of fodder for you in the next few months. <laughs> and of course, Mel Gibson. Thanks, Mel. Thanks for coming by. The movie is Lethal Weapon 3. Look at all the free stuff I got, books and everything. Dog biscuits for everybody.